What is going on, Matt Morris? MattMorris.com. Thanks for tuning in here today. I'm going to give you a uh, lowdown on the recruiting numbers that led to a million customers in eight years. I was actually looking at a training that I did a few years ago back when my organization uh, surpassed a million customers and it had been right around eight years and I actually went down and I broke out the numbers. I did this in a training, a, uh, a live training, just kind of showing people what the recruiting numbers look like. In order to have an organization that duplicates to that level, what do the numbers look like? And so I'm going to share the numbers with you here in just a second. As you hop on, let me know where you're tuning in from. Give me your city, your country. Let me know if you're watching this live or on the replay. And uh, if you're seeing me for the first time, drop a one in the comments so we can welcome you to the broadcast. And if you do decide to share this, just drop me the word shared or let me know in the comments so I can give you a shout out. So let's do this. So I'm going to pull up the, uh, the numbers that I shared and I'll kind of share with you what happened. So you know, I, uh, I had a business collapse. Some of you know, I owned a network marketing company for about five years and we grew pretty slow and steady, uh, a little over a hundred thousand customers in about a five year time frame, And things were going pretty good at the end, at tail end of 2008, I got hit with half a million dollars worth of credit card fraud within our company created a domino effect. And long story short, six months later, I found myself $750,000 in debt. At 32 years old, I was actually proud of myself for being able to figure out how to get into that much debt at that young of an age. Uh, but let's say it was uh, very safe to say I was in a situation where I needed to figure out what I was going to do with the rest of my life. Obviously, wanted to be involved in the network marketing profession. And so I joined a company and I decided to go to work. And, you know, like every company I had had success in, including my own network marketing company, I knew I needed to go all out. I mean, I knew when I came in, I was going to have to work like a maniac. And I, here's the thing about me is I know I've never been the best presenter. I know I've never been the best trainer. I'm not the most effective closer. I'm not the best at getting new people started. If you look at all of the major skills in network marketing, while I've mastered all the major skills, I am nowhere close to the best at any of those. Uh, there are lots and lots and lots of people who are way better than I am at all of those individual skills. And I think it was Jim Rohn's building your network marketing business. And he said something to the effect of what you lack in skill, you make up for in numbers. And so I've just always had the attitude that, you know, I don't have to be the best at everything. If I'm willing to go outwork everyone else and do more numbers, the numbers will make up for it. And that's not to say, it's a warning here, this is not to say you don't focus on getting good. Obviously, you should focus on getting good. You should focus on getting ridiculously good. I've always invested in myself. I've always attended as many trainings. I invest tens of thousands of dollars a year on my own personal development and my own skill development as well. But as the late Brian Clemmer said, if how-tos were enough, we'd all be rich, skinny, and happy. And I firmly believe that you don't get really good at a skill unless you apply it over and over and over. See, there's an art and science to pretty much every skill out there, especially in the network marketing profession. You know, you got generating leads, there's inviting people, there's presenting, there's closing, getting people started, event promotion, training, all of that. Lots of skills. And you can go get the practical knowledge. You can read books and trainings and I sell trainings and all that, right? So there's no shortage of that, but no matter, you may learn from the best of the best. I mean, I think my training is the best out there. Maybe someone else's is the best out there. It doesn't matter. You can go get the best training in the world, but if you don't apply that training over and over and over, you never learn the art. And I think the big money in our profession, the big money is in the art. 
Uh, science is easy to learn, art not so easy to learn. And I'm not an artistic guy, but my art is in uh, building businesses and in leadership development and so forth. And so, um, you know, I knew it's like, you know, the way I'd become the number one earner in two different companies was outworking everyone else. And so I said, you know what? It's just what I got to do. So I'm going to go do massive numbers. And if I do massive numbers, the duplication will happen. And so here's kind of what my numbers look like. A million customers in eight years. Now, I personally, at the time when I did this training, I had personally sponsored 280 people. Now, <laughs> that means I showed the business to well over a thousand. So I predict that in that eight year time frame, I got about 1,000 personal rejections. And so I'm just going to ask you, you know, everyone wants to make millions of dollars. Everyone would love to have an organization that grows to a million customers in any time frame, let alone in eight years. We'd love that. So the question is, have you gotten 1,000 personal rejections? And I'm not talking about, you know, you go do a training or you go do a meeting, a presentation for other people, or maybe a Zoom for a, a team. And there's 50 prospects on there, five sign up, 45 said no. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about personal rejections, meaning I've reached out to someone and said, hey, I want you to take a look at my business or my products, my services. I send them a link or I go through a presentation with them and they don't enroll. That's what I'm saying is I know a personal rejection. So within about eight years, 1,000 personal rejections. Now, when you break it out on a yearly basis or a monthly basis, it's not a crazy high number. And what ended up happening is out of those 280, here's where you really want to pay attention. Here's where it gets juicy. Of the 280, 237 quit. 237 out of 280 quit. So at the time of the 280 that I sponsored, only 43 were active, only 43. And here's what's interesting. Of the 43, at the time, there were six major leaders who had emerged. Uh, other smaller teams with you know a few hundred people here and there, but six major leaders. Now, the breakdown of that, one of those leaders led to 6,000 customers. One of those leaders led to 20,000 customers. Another leader led to 23,000. These are different personally sponsored groups. Another leader led to 52,000. Another one led to 300,000. And another one led to over 700,000. Okay. And when I share that, people think, well, how the hell do I find leaders like that? What's interesting is... Most of the leaders that I found that I personally sponsored, they weren't the leader that went out and built the biggest team. I sponsored someone. In one case, I'll give you a quick example. I sponsored someone. He worked for, I don't know, a few months, sponsored some people, and then he quit. And he led me to someone who 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 went out and built a huge, huge team. And that's just generally how it works. It's not always the person that you sponsor. It is who they lead you to. And that's why we've got to be always looking for the leader because it's, not, it's often not the person that you personally put in. And, you know, the key is this. I'd love to tell you I have this magic formula for sponsoring leaders. And, you know, I've certainly gotten better than I was years ago. When you establish some credibility and some authority, it's obviously easier to attract other high-level leaders. Now, there's a, a law in network marketing. It's a leadership law. And it says that, you know, this leadership law says that, you know, if you're a five on the leadership scale, would you ever follow a three? If you're a seven, would you follow a five? If you're a 10, would you follow a seven? Usually not. So we attract people who are typically at a lower level leadership than ourselves. And that's why it's amazingly important to always work on your level of leadership and your level of ability, right? And so here's the whole thing. Um, you know, it's like, it's not focusing on, I never really focused on finding amazing leaders. Um, 
I knew I wouldn't find amazing leaders because the leaders are out there. And I'll just tell you one of the mindsets that I think will make you a lot of money in our profession is having a mindset that it's impossible to fail. Now, here's why it's impossible to fail, because whatever network marketing company you're involved in, there is someone out there who, if you present it to them, they will get amazingly excited about your opportunity and they will go out and build a huge business. You can't convince me there's not someone who will get excited about your opportunity and go out and crush it. <laughs> you don't know who that person is and you're going to have to sort through a lot of people to find it. It's kind of like mining for diamonds. You know, you got to sort through tons of diamonds in order, or sorry, tons of dirt to find one little diamond. Tons, thousands and thousands of pounds of dirt to find one speck of diamond. So in our business, we got to sort through a lot of people in order to find the diamonds. Okay, so my focus wasn't necessarily on finding the leaders. I knew I'd finding the leaders. It was a matter of going through the numbers. And so then you think, man, how do I find 280 people? I need to sponsor 280. And that's great to focus on. It's a better thing to focus on. But here's the reason why most people don't sponsor 280. It's not because they can't find 280. It's because they're not willing to go get a thousand rejections personal rejections, because the number one fear in the world is the fear of what? Fear of rejection. They say it's the fear of public speaking, but we all know that the fear of public speaking is just the fear of being rejected publicly. So here's the whole thing. It's not that you can't find 280. It's that you're not willing to get rejected by over a thousand, because sometimes the rejection hurts. And I'll tell you what you know, there's a, a great book. It's on my bookshelf somewhere here. It's called Rhinoceros Success. You got to be willing to develop some really thick skin. And if you can develop that thick skin, I'm telling you, there's no shortage of success. There's no limitation to the success that you can have in our profession because the quickest way to find leaders is to sort through a lot of people. Now, obviously, you need to be getting people started. You need to be plugging people into trainings. There's other things that you need to be doing. But the bottom line is you can go out and get the numbers if you're willing to go out and get enough rejection. And so here's what I did. I have some trainers who will disagree with this. And, uh, you know, it's making the NOAA goal. And I knew it's like in order for me to go find a lot of quality people, I know I'm going to have to get rejected because hear, hear me on this. If you're the best in the world in network marketing, the best in the world, you'll sponsor one out of maybe three people that you, that you talk to. Now, there are plenty of network marketing gurus out there who tell you they have a 90% closing ratio and they're lying. They're just full of you know what? I mean, no one has a 90% closing ratio. So I'd say one out of three, you know? Uh, <laughs> and here's the thing. Anyone who has a 90% closing ratio, I, I don't see any, you know, solid multi-million dollar earners out there saying they have a 90% closing ratio. It's usually someone selling you on a closing training. So uh, that's a buyer beware. But um, no, you're going you're gonna to have to get rejected. If you sign up one out of three and you're amazing, that means you're going to get two no's for every yes. So even if you're the best in the world, you're going to have to get more no's than yeses. And if that's the case, I know I get paid. Obviously, when someone enrolls, I'd make a product sale. Someone enrolls in my business and they buy a product. Then obviously, I'm going to make a commission. But... I can't get to that commission. I can't get to that yes if I'm not willing to go through at least a couple no's. So for me, I look at it like I get paid on the no's, just like I get paid on the yeses. And so it's easy to not get so frustrated going through the no's when you realize, hey, the way it averages out, I get paid on the no's just like I get paid on the yeses. And so I knew that going in. I knew it was just a matter of me going out and get a ton of rejection. See, here's what I did for years that caused me to fail. I would only show the business to someone if I thought there was a pretty good chance of them enrolling. So I did my best to avoid rejection. I wanted to avoid rejection at all costs. And so a failure attitude in network marketing is this. You're in the middle and you got 
uh, yes is here and no is here. And you're trying to avoid the rejection at all costs to only get the yeses. Trying to play mind reader and do all this crazy stuff, right? It's just not the way it works. What caused me to finally start having a lot of success is when I realized the only way to have huge success is if I'm right here, success is on the other end and massive rejection is in the middle. And if I'm willing to go through massive rejection and get told no over and over and over and over and develop some thick rhino skin, then that will lead me to a lot of success. So listen, my friends, I hope this uh, made an impact. And here's the thing. People look at becoming a, a top leader, hitting the top rank in your compensation plan. Here's the reality. If you sponsored one person, you've already done what it takes to hit the top rank in your company. You, you've already really done it. And that is enrolling one more person. You just haven't enrolled enough. Obviously, there's other things that you need to do. So I'm not trying to oversimplify it. But I know if you can go out and figure out how to enroll one person, you can enroll two, you can enroll four, you can enroll 40, you can enroll 400. So if you can enroll one, if you can figure that out, you can hit the top rank in your company. You just got to keep doing it over and over and over. And whatever company you're with, you have a system, there's a training system, there's a process in place, and you just plug people into it. And you keep doing that over and over and over. The biggest challenge in our profession, I believe, is not overcomplicating the process. So listen, hope you enjoyed this. If you got some value out of this and you feel like it would add some value to some others, feel free to share it. We'd love to hear your comments below. Let me know how you felt about it. And I'll go back and I will read each and every one. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Let's go make life an adventure. Take care.